Thank you. In the ancient tapestries of Islam, the elaborate designs seem perfectly rendered, but for one small corner, in which the rigid pattern is intentionally broken. The idea being that only Allah is perfect. The Greeks in the 8th century BC sought to create a perfect society. They were a barbarous people, but from their culture came the Iliad and the Odyssey. In the late 18th century, Immanuel Kant wrote, out of timber so crooked as that from which man is made, nothing entirely straight can be built. If an intelligent alien society is watching us, what might they make of our stewardship of this planet? Perfection is not to be found in human nature. Good and evil are within each of us, and the struggle for our better angels to triumph over our demons is constant. We are all imperfect. The search for utopian societies has often led to bloodshed. Religions tell us we can't achieve perfection without divine grace, but only great art and the artists who created achieve perfection in my view. When I first became a filmmaker, I would restage scenes many times, trying to coax perfection out of every moment. Now, after 45 years and 16 films, I treasure only those moments of imperfection that resulted from spontaneous behavior. For me, a kind of perfection is found in three works of art, all poorly received in their time. Vermeer's view of Delft was painted between 1660 and 1661. Its permanent home is in the Mauritius Museum in The Hague. I first saw it in 1995 at the National Gallery in Washington, D.C., in an exhibition devoted to 21 of the 35 surviving Vermeers. A little more than three feet high by four feet wide, the composition is a harmonious contrast of light and dark. We're looking at a small Dutch city from across a harbor. A light breeze ripples the water, where a few open boats lie at rest. Behind the harbor are orange-tiled roofs, church spires, the city walls with two gates, one with a clock tower, the other with two towers. The walls are in shadow, and the city beyond is bathed in an intense sunlight, dwarfed by clouds of various shapes and colors and patches of blue sky. There are six small figures in the foreground, three men and three women, in two groups, engaged in a casual conversation, standing on a strip of unpaved land. The image uh, at first appears to be photographic, but as you move closer to it, you see the way the paint surface itself creates the light. Abstraction underlines the realism. The painting has immediacy and timelessness, the poetic beauty of the everyday life of ordinary people. But unlike life, everything is permanent never changing, the feeling of a serene and perfect world. There's a mystery about Vermeer's life. He lived only 43 years. He left behind no writings, no sketches or drawings. We have no idea how he looked. There are no known portraits of him. We don't know if he ever studied art. He seems to have spent his entire life in Delft, population 25,000 people. We do know that he was unable to earn a living from his work. There was a custom in Delft that one of its, when one of its citizens died, the city fathers would collect his clothing for donation to the poor. 
Vermeer's clothes were in such poor condition, they were burned. His wife, Katharina, told the high court that being burdened by 13 children, unable to sell a painting, and without resources, had caused her husband to lapse into decay. She sold his paintings to pay off debt. Two of his greatest works were given to the local baker. Twenty-six others were sold to an art dealer for 500 guilders. More than two centuries passed before his work was appreciated. Today, his impact is monumental. Marcel Proust called the view of Delft the most beautiful picture in the world. I'm told that when it was shipped to Washington in 1995, it was insured for $100 million.